Why do I care about influence? I care about influence because businesses are built on people. People have all these weird bugs in the system. They act weird. Like people act weird. They act crazy. They act at total odds from what they say they want. To do the job. To live your life. And protect yourself. From all of the things that may affect your life. There are people right now that have been told that they are worthless. The next step is being a leader. You have to decide that you want to lead. You have to step forward. That means not being like everybody else in your school. I don't care if you're in sixth grade or you're in college right now. It's being a leader. I've come to learn that there's a huge difference between failing and failure. Failing is like stubbing your toe. You know it happens. It's, it's, it's a verb. You know it's just something you do. But failure is a noun. It's an identity. It's a place where you stay. And I failed a lot, a lot, a lot along the way. But I was never a failure because I kept Trying, I kept doing it. I understood over time that my value wasn't representative of the things that worked or didn't work. It's really bizarre. And one of the things, it's bizarre until you really get into the psychology of why it is. Once you understand why it is, then you can have some influence over it. So that really is the, the thing nobody talks about. And I'm always weirded out how nobody talks about emotion. Nobody, nobody wants to connect. Brene Brown talks about vulnerability. If you don't know Brene Brown, look her up. Dude, I will be the most vulnerable cat whenever because it tells people I'm real. It gives you real insight into me as a human being. Now, why is that important? Because you know I wouldn't do it if it didn't move me towards my goals. So even vulnerability for me is a strategy. But the reason it works is because I'm opening myself up as a human being. Connection regrets are if only I'd reached out. And these are regrets about relationships um, where you have a relationship or you should have had a relationship, and it comes apart, usually through drifts, and you want to reach out, but you don't because you think it's going to be awkward and the other side's not going to care, so it drifts out even more, and then in, in some cases it, it ends up being too late. And so these four regrets, to me, reveal what makes life worth living. What do we want out of life? We want a stable foundation. We want some stability. We want a chance to do something. We want a chance to learn and grow and lead a psychologically rich life. You're connecting with people on a real level. There's just, it is just a truth. Human beings want to connect with authentic people. And the people they distrust the most are the ones that they can't understand their motives. When you don't understand someone's motives, I'll speak for myself. When I don't understand someone's motives, they freak me out. I can feel them trying to move me around the chessboard and I don't know why. I don't mind when I feel someone moving me around the chessboard when I know why they're doing it. Because then I can decide if I want to move or not. But if I don't know why, there's just that resistance to being moved. The unknown. The unease that that causes. So once I fully accepted that I was dealing with humans, that they didn't want to feel me moving them around the chessboard, that they would respond if I opened myself up to them, they would open themselves up to me, that they would open themselves up to each other, that we could really get some teamwork and some cohesion. Um, if I hired for compassion, which is just, it just works in human societies. Humans are a social animal. We want to do the right thing. I'm convinced that most of us want to do the right thing. And what else do we want? We want love. We want connection to other people. And that's what makes life worth living. In a weird way, regret also taught me about what makes a good life. Because as I had you know, collected 16,000 regrets from people in 105 countries. And when they told me their regret, in a sense, they were also telling me about what made life worth living. How do I turn that? Like, how do I take something that feels like it hurts and turn it into progress? This is important. In some ways, it's central. Regret hurts. There's no question about that. But here's the thing. Regret also instructs, and you can't have one without the other. So if you avoid the pain, you don't get any of the learning. So what you have to do is be able to process that pain. And I think there's a way for us to do that, to take our regrets, use them as signals. It was so frustrating because I was chasing an idea of value, not understanding that I was valued to begin with a crumpled up 20 bill is still 20. It doesn't lose its value when it's beaten up. You have a right to what you're feeling. But just because you feel it doesn't mean it's real. I'm going to acknowledge that I don't like this, but I'm also going to acknowledge that I don't want to stay in this feeling because if I already have to go through this diabetes, I already have to go through being different. That they won't amount to anything. And they have allowed their emotions and their feelings 
to get disrupted. And ladies and gentlemen, you allow these things to happen because you're not protecting yourself. So you got to suit up. You got to put on that arm. You got to be a little bit more faithful. You have to understand that there is a purpose behind the purpose. And there is a greater power than you and I. It's not being one of the guys. It's not being part of the pack. It's, it's being different than other people. It's thinking different than other people. It's learning early in life that other people's approval, your friends, your buddies liking everything you do and believing in everything you do is not going to get you where you want in life. It's being a leader. It's being a visionary. It's being unique. It's stepping out. And when you're young, you're going to take criticism for it. You're going to take flack for being different, for not going with the flow, for not drinking with everybody or smoking weed with everybody. Stay away from those things when you're young. Stay away from them when you're old if you can. These are not the practices of people that win. Let everybody else smoke and do drugs and smoke weed and get in trouble and go down that path and you lead you step out you be different you be extraordinary and you be proud of the fact that you're different i already have to go through feeling like a monster i don't have to beat myself up in my own head if you get a flat tire on the side of the road you don't set your car on fire you deal with the flat tire but that's what i felt like i was doing and a lot of people do a lot of people set the car on fire instead of addressing the main issue they build upon it and make it worse how can I become more than what's happened to me? How can I become more than the circumstance that I hate? But how can I not let the hate towards the circumstance? No matter how you look at me, you can't do it alone. But you better put on that arm. Don't glorify yourself. Because you're only passing through. Suit up that arm. And be about your business. Because that's what we have to do. Don't take your life for granted. Don't feel that you cannot be touched. Because you must know. Keep that armor on. Carry on. And live strong. And from the bottom of my heart. Keep the faith. Look up. And conduct your business. The question is. Why do we fall? The next thing is you got to work on your self-confidence, right? You got to become more confident. You know when you're listening, it's something you don't have enough of. Self-confidence is the process, listen to me, of keeping the promises that you make to yourself. When you begin to make a promise, I'm going to get up at a certain time, or I'm going to clean my room, I'm going to get a certain grade, I'm going to study, I'm going to do something, deliver on the promise you make to yourself. Not what you promise your parents, or you promise your friends, what you promise you. When you begin to stack what you promise yourself and you deliver on it, you begin to build a reputation with yourself that you can trust you, and that will serve you the rest of your life when you trust and you like you. That's self-confidence. Keep the promises you make to yourself. The next part is start to work on your self-worth, your identity, which is different than just your confidence. Self-worth means I deserve this. I'm worth this. And that comes from doing the hard work. That comes from being unique. It comes from noticing it when you're a leader, noticing it when you do things other people don't do, noticing it when you turn away from bullying somebody and you're the kind one or you interrupt someone who's bullying and you stop it. I can't control, control me, control me. You know sometimes we get addicted to. This is like making everything beautiful, making everything like amazing and sometimes we have to be real. Some situations do suck they do and we have to allow them to suck and not invalidate the fact that it does suck. My job is to not let my mind take over. And that's when I win and when I lose and everything in between you have a choice between what you think and what you do and that choice is everything is everything.
feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I wanna be the greatest Everybody on the face shit I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest I make this Every day and I'm impatient Hoping one day I blow up from the basement Statement The top is so vacant I don't need shit that I think is amazing Waiting for my day when I'm playing Sold out shows for a thousand faces Hey, Give me that crown Get in my way and to be put down It ain't replaced all this my town If I want that shit then I'll get it right now I'm losing it The noose if it's some loose shit A stupid myth You choose to live or choose to dip You choose to fight or lose your grip And lose a gift Oh I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Everybody in the world blind Please Lord give me a sign A sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind Please Lord give me a sign A sign I wanna be the greatest Everybody on the face shit I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest I make this every day and I'm impatient Hoping one day I blow up from the basement Statement the top so vacant, I don't need shit that I think is amazing Waiting for my day when I'm playing Sold out shows for a thousand faces, Hey, Give me that crown, get in my way and to be put down It ain't your place, all this my town If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now I'm losing it, the noose if it's some loose shit A stupid myth, you choose to live or choose to dip You choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift, oh. I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign Yo, there's no mercy in this world Just hunger, thirsty persons In different versions Each new update, that shit worsens Why? Pull back the curtain and you'll see the different vermin We all have different burdens that all seem to cause disturbance Yo, so do me a favor, don't treat me like a neighbor Don't need the different flavors of your problems just to savor I've